Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you excited for the word of God? I'm excited already, praise God. But before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? I remember, we're having a program coming up in a few days time this week. Friday, praise God. I'm going to talk to you about that. Can we call for that daily bread? Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Expect a miracle today. Praise God. Now then, you remember you know, we're dealing with the opening of the book. Now, everything I'm sharing with you is towards this that you understand that when God begins to open the book, it's an activation of judgment on the earth. Now, this is one thing you need to understand. That that's why Satan will fight tooth and nail to see to it that that book is not opened. So when you read in the book of Revelation that he, the first seal, he, he opened the first seal and then this and that began to happen. He opened the second seal and this and that began to happen. Simply put, Satan was fighting. Now, this is Satan's own project himself. He is going to fight tooth and nail so that that book will not be opened. But you see, God who have spoken long before now have settled the matter and everything he has spoken will come to pass according to the dictates of what he has said. Jesus himself said, not one jot or tittle will go without being fulfilled. Everything that came out of God's mouth must be fulfilled. Now that's the reason if you follow and understand the teachings of Jesus, all he is telling you is, look, calm down. Calm down. That's why he says, take no thought for your life. Saying, what will I eat? Or clothes, what will I put on? Now, why do people struggle in life? Why do people really fight every day, running helter-skelter? It's because they have no faith in what God has said. Many don't even know what God has said. If you know and understand what God has said concerning your life, concerning your future, guess what? You will be relaxed. I mean, I'll give you an example. If I tell you, look, today is, today is Thursday, for example, and I say to you, look, you are going to, I'm going to give you a million dollars next week, Friday. Now, you know, if you know I have that capacity and then I love you that much, you know that, then I give you that promise that, look, I'm going to give you this amount of money by next week, Friday. Now, guess what? If, if tomorrow or today, later today, someone comes up to you and say, oh, you're owing me some money. I need my money. I need my money. Now, what are you going to do? They say, ah, please, you know what? Can you just be patient with me? By next week, Friday, or just Saturday, I'll pay your money. Oh, you see, no need to fight me. I'm assuring you. Why are you saying that? Because you believe what I said. So your disposition in dealing with that present issue will be calm. You say, no, let's not shout about this. Thing. See, there's something I'm working on. I'm assuring you, please, please, if after that day, you see, you're ready to talk like that. Now, that's different if you don't have any hope, if you don't have any promise that I've been given to you. In that case, you start saying, eh, but you see, money is not easy to come by. You start arguing to see how you can argue yourself out of that situation. Why are you doing that? Because there is no hope for you. You see that now? 
So now when we know what God has said, guess what? Our disposition in life becomes calm. And this is the truth. The works we are finished from the foundation of the world. Everything God is going to do, he finished it. When God rested on the seventh day, brothers and sisters, trust me, he rested. Rest in the sense of I am done. I'm done with what every, with everything I need to do. I am done. Everything that will ever exist in this world, God created it within those six days. Yes, everything, all, everything he created in six days. Even the things that are yet to happen in the world, he finished it. See? So what's, what Satan is doing today is to fight to see that instead of God's plan to be established, his own plan will be established. Let me explain it this way to you. You have a land somewhere. And because you have not built anything on that land yet, someone went behind your back. And for some reason, you were not aware. And went ahead to build something on that land. And he, he tries, knowing that the land is not his own, he tries to build something that is so massive. And you understand? So now what is his intention? So that by the time you come, you will look at what is there. And he's not going to tell you, eh, but see, I know it's your land though, but why don't you just allow the, I mean, this thing, this, you want to bring down this edifice. Why don't you just leave it? So let's discuss. Maybe you'll sell it or something. You see that now? Now that's exactly what Satan has done on the earth. He's gone establishing his own principles. He's gone establishing his own things everywhere on the earth. With the hope that God is going to look at the earth and say, Ah! Lucifer, Lucifer. You see, people think God is fighting with Lucifer. No. Till this day, Lucifer still feels that God can never get anyone like him. That's the thought he still carries in his heart. That God can never get anyone like him. That's the reason he loves to interfere with anything that belongs to God. He loves to interfere. He does it with this mindset that I know it better. You see that? I know it better. That's the mindset with which he works. But you see what he doesn't know is he only knows till the point that he was in charge. From the moment he stopped being in charge, and the thing about God is God is an eternal God. His wisdom is endless. His innovation is endless. And you see, yes, he had finished everything, but guess what? There are still things God has finished that our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard. It has not entered into the heart of man. So when we say God is opening the books, I want you to understand this. There are things that are going to happen in your life that nobody, nobody will be able to predict it. Nobody will be able to see it. Nobody will be able to talk about it before it happens. And that's the kind of life that we live in here. So you see, following God, knowing these things, that but the good thing about this is his thoughts concerning us, they are good. So even if God tells you, go to sleep, I will handle it. Don't start questioning, but oh Lord, you know, I, I don't know how you will handle it. I don't know. You know, for example, you're a lady and you're praying, Lord, I need a tall, dark, and handsome guy that has money, that has this, that has that. You say, Father, Lord, this is exactly my desire and I put it to you. And then you hear the voice of Lord say, my daughter, I have heard you. Go to sleep. 
I'll fix it. And as you're going to see, you say, ah, what will we do? What if God now give me? How many of you, how many of you have thought that? What if now God now gives me a short guy? What will I do? What if I no? Is it, now this is this is what makes people behave the way they do. In doubt, they start looking around. You know, ah, is this the one? Is this the one? Hey, if God says I have heard you, go to sleep. I am my castle right now. You know, I've, I've said this at different times. Even if a short person comes, all you need to do is to find out from the Lord, is this, are you the one that sent this person? That's all you need to know. And but I ask God for a tall person, who created the heights? Oh, you don't think that God can add inches to that height? Supernaturally. You don't think so. <laughs> you remember Moses. Moses said, God, I'm a stammer. God said, hey, Moses, I created the tongue. God was telling Moses right there. I said, Moses, I can heal your tongue. That's not an excuse. How can you be calling a stammerer to go and talk for you? Think about it. But because he's God. So you see, when God sets out, he doesn't do anything that will cause you damage. But you know the truth, sometimes even you yourself don't understand the desires that you are expressing to God. You don't understand it. You say, I know what I want. I know. You know, you don't know what you want. Because you're the same person who said, I need a tall, dark, and handsome guy. One day, you're going to wake up and say, eh, is it tall and handsome we will eat? Yes. You will be the same person to say that. One day, that person will be undesirable in your eyes. But when God gives you, God knows, I call my neck ready. Now you are here saying tall, dark, and handsome because that is what your mind can interpret the desire that is in your heart. Meanwhile, the desire was put in there by God. But your interpretation is wrong. It takes a while. I told you before, prophecies can never be interpreted accurately or explained accurately before they are fulfilled. No. Because any interpretation you try to give will be in types and shadows. Yes. Because mostly prophecies are given in parables. So the only time you can say that, ah, ah is after the prophecy is fulfilled. Now, those are things you must learn when you are walking with God. So sometimes your desires are true, but even you, in your mind, your, your interpretation can be wrong. But God who sees exactly how the desire is, knows how to answer the desire. So 20 years to come, 40 years to come, 50 years to come, you will look and say, wow, God actually gave me what I asked for. Meanwhile, when you meet that thing, you know, what is this one? But God tells you, I'm the one giving it to you. You take it. But well, that's not what I asked for now. God says, my dear, take it. I should take it, but God, I thought you said you would give us the desires of our heart. And God says, take it. I'm the one giving it to you. Mm. Okay, oh, God, let your will be done. And then you accept it. Time passes. And one day you wake up and say, hey, this is exactly what I asked the Lord for. Because when you think tall, the desire can be tall. But actually, what it means is being a giant in the spirit. You see that now? So you meet this brother, I'm talking about human beings now, description. You meet this brother, physically he doesn't look that tall. And you say, ah, that's not what I asked God for. Father, ha, hey, Lord, Lord. But a, a few years down the line, that will be the list of your priorities. 
See that now? Rather, you will begin to realize that I needed a child. I needed a tall person in the spirit. And then you look at this same guy. I'm like, this is, this is a giant. This is exact. Man, this is really what I ask God for. Praise God. That's how it is. God has finished everything. And guess what? It's all good for you. Everything he created and made is good. Now, as we live our lives daily, you see that book that he says he has begun to open over your life. You see that book that no eye have seen. The content of that book no ear have heard. It has not even entered into the heart of man. The things that are written concerning you in that book. But guess what? God have given to you his spirit. The Holy Spirit will take you by the hand and begin to lead you into those things that have been written concerning you. And this is important, especially in this season. Because what God is saying to us now, you see that book, it is time to open it. So no matter the offensive nature the devil comes, no matter the distraction he tries to bring, this is what is going to be happening. The devil will rise up and God, his rising will become his judgment. Anything that rises against you in this season, that thing that rises will enter into his judgment. Now that's the dealings of this season. Anything that rises against you will only open up its judgment. Yes. Yes. So watch your life and see the things that are going to rise against you. This is why you must be sensitive to the Spirit of God in this season more than ever before. Put emotions out of things. Look at everything squarely and judge them according to the word of the Lord. But hear me, in this season, anything that rises up against you is only doing so to open up their judgment. And before your eyes, you will see the judgment of God come on them. Just like we read in scriptures. So relax. Pay attention to what God is saying. He is speaking to you. Pay attention to his words. Pay attention to his voice. And God is going to do amazing things in your life. Before we close, because my time is up, I want to remind you, the program is tomorrow. The opening of the book is holding tomorrow by 5 p.m. at the Three J's Hotel here in Abuja, Otako District, Abuja, the Diamond Hall, 3J's Hotel. Listening to me, I pray, we've been praying for you every day, that this meeting truly will turn things around in your life. To us, this meeting is a mark that will begin to open up the heavens in your life. That's why I'm encouraging you at hand. Come, plan for it, leave whatever you're doing, show up at this meeting. And God is going to do amazing things in your life. We've been praying for you. The Lord has been speaking to us concerning this meeting. I'm so excited about it. What about you? Plan for it. Tomorrow, 5 p.m., let's meet together and receive from the Lord all that he has for us. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.